This Ridley O sponsored by Keenvention Yard Info. It's a keen convention, you'll have to go. I've heard a lot of spit hits the fan plans in my day, but I've never heard one that sounds like mine. So maybe I should share it. When you watch Spit Hits the Fan movies, my plan hardly ever seems to be part of the of the film. Maybe that's because they didn't consult with me. But here it is. Assuming some sort of disaster has occurred that stops electricity in my location for a week or more and reduces access or reduces access to basic necessities by at least 75% for a comparable period of time. A disaster smaller than this might not be suitable for my plan. Anyway, it doesn't really matter where I am. It probably doesn't matter much what the circumstances are. What I would do first is try to, number one, uh, be in some sort of static location, semi-static. Number two, uh, uh, well, 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 going back to number one. So, for, for instance, the reason I, the reason I bring this up as a as something that needs, needs to be done as opposed to something that's already in place. For, for instance, I might be at an airport or somehow traveling from one place to another, so it shouldn't be assumed that the plan has to involve a home. Anyway, wherever I was, I'd probably then do number two, which would be set up a message board of some kind or a spot where message boards can be placed. So it was just, in theory, established some communications among all the people who were within a few hundred yards of that location. And I would want to do that at about the same time that everyone is getting panicky. You don't want to do it while everyone's calm and figures it's just, you know, like a storm that will pass or something like that. I've done that before and it's doing too much too soon. No one pays any attention or cares. because they figure the power's gonna be back on in a couple days or they're not getting hungry and they're not gonna. <laughs> Whenever we have a situation like that for a few days in New Hampshire, no one even seems to know how to loot. <laughs> they, they just know how to shoot. But anyway, the panic point might come earlier in a less rural place. Then, number three, the primary purpose of the message board would be to help establish quickly trade in that static location, or semi-static. So probably I'd the first message I would put up would simply be to announce the time and place of some sort of swap meet. This would ideally be indoors in a fairly public place. It would be a place where guns are unlikely to be restricted, a place which would not be very easy to attack. And so maybe the idea would be to set up a, after the first hopefully successful swap meet, the idea would be to set up, a, set up things so that the meet is occurring every day at a given time. I guess Step number four <clears throat> might be a matter of taking your trade group, perhaps around the three week or one month mark into the crisis, and trading with other groups outside your immediate area. Part of the whole process, of course, would be uh, defending the uh, trade spot and the tra trading people. But anyway, this whole process sort of offers an alternative to the scenarios you see on television where people seem to be given only the choice of altruism versus Mad Max behavior. You know, the good guys are the ones that share with you, and the bad guys are the ones that take from you. Well, the truth is that you, there needs to be a middle ground that can benefit everyone, and that's trade. Anyway, traditionally, I keep a sort of what I call starter pack with me, like a uh, trade starter pack, which mainly is just a, uh, you know, a couple marks a lot, uh, you know, uh, card stock, uh, some foam board, should have nails, thumbtacks, a hammer, tape, and the kinds of things you would use for communicating and writing on a telephone pole without electricity. In theory, some people would have nothing to trade, but uh, those people could trade their labor for things. Although again, you've got to have a defensive capability in order to prevent them from just taking those things. It's got to be in their best interest to trade. Planning for this kind of scenario then would be different, uh, planning for this kind of reaction would be different from normal SHTF type planning. Instead of focusing so much on trying to have everything you need, well, you might want to focus on that some, but there would be a, an incentive 
to have a large amount of stuff you can trade that won't ever go bad and which you'll use anyway even if the spit never hits the fan uh, you'll just use it later so things like honey never really goes bad candles they never really go bad anyway absent interference from a government this plan should in theory uh, because it moves so fast and gets ahead of the curve without getting too far ahead should create something that is capable of withstanding all kinds of challenges but maybe you've got a better idea I think it turns your neighbors and potential predators into your source of food and protection helping them at the same time This Ridley O sponsored by Keenvention.info. It's a keen convention you'll have to go. Only 50 bucks held near the peak of leaf peeping season in a place that's fascinating even without its natural beauty. The purpose is to focus discussion on New Hampshire freedom activism. Keenvention.info. It's a keen convention you'll have to go.